So coming to roles and privileges. Try to understand this basic concept. There are five types of roles and privileges. The first one is an aggregate privilege. OK, these are predefined. You cannot edit them. You cannot delete them. You cannot make changes. OK, these are basically the functional privileges for individual tasks and duty relevant to the security policy. We will talk about what is a duty role, what is a you know, task and what are the security profiles. So these aggregate privileges, they come along with some functional access to a page and also a data access. OK, so these privileges will grant you access to certain task flows, certain application pages or work areas within the system. OK. Next, you have duty roles. Duty role is something which uniquely identifies a part of their duty or a job. For example, now you are specifically saying HR, you know, or human resource specialist or HR analyst. So that is clearly defining that this person has to perform roles related to HR. Right. So if I say manager, a manager could be any manager. You are not defining a specific you know, role or duty that manager is performing. But if I'm saying a finance controller or uh, you know, uh, inventory management person, something like that. So those are relevant duties for their job and they will grant access only to that relevant work area. Okay. So these job roles and duty roles, uh, sorry, job roles and abstract roles will inherit these duty roles. Okay. Duty roles can also inherit other duty roles. Again, the concept of hierarchy and distribution list, one list within another list. Similarly, one duty role can inherit other duty roles. You cannot directly assign duty roles to users. You cannot directly assign aggregated privileges to users. What can you assign to users? You can assign an abstract role, a job role, or a data role. So what is an abstract role? An abstract role is representing the worker's role irrespective of whatever job they are doing, like employee. An employee is just an employee. You're not specifying what is the job that this particular employee is going to do, right? Manager, contingent worker, Again, these are predefined roles when it comes to HR. For other models, there are other predefined abstract roles as well. But then you can create custom abstract roles. You cannot create custom duty roles uh, or custom aggregated privileges. You can create custom abstract roles. And these abstract roles can inherit your duty roles or aggregate privileges to grant certain access to the application. Right? And then these abstract roles can be directly assigned to users. Next, you have job roles. Now, job roles are, like I said, specific to your job. They will grant you access to the work area that you are going to perform. You know, like human resource analyst or payroll manager, benefits manager, or absence administrator, things like that, where you are specifically looking for a work area within the application. So this job role, there are predefined job roles. <laughs> you can create custom job roles. These predefined job roles come with certain inherited duty roles, which grant you access to the specific work area that you're looking for. OK, now typically job roles are not assigned to users directly, but we assign data roles and these job roles are inherited by data role. OK, so why do we do this? So typically data role is nothing but a job role plus data access for that particular work area. Now, for example, in yesterday's session, you've seen that when I go to person management and I search for a person, right? There are some actions that I can perform. Like uh, personal employment and things like that. So the job role grants you access to that particular screen of person management. But the data role is what granted you access to search for the employee, perform certain actions on that employee. 
Therefore, if you are giving the delivered job roles to an employee or a user, they will only get access till that page. They will not be able to search for employees. Right? That is where data role comes in. And you need to assign the appropriate data access to the job role so that they can perform the actions on that given person or you know, whatever work area that you're looking for. You can create data roles directly, but typically you inherit job roles to create a data role. Right? And you define the data access through something called a security profiles, which we will be covering shortly. All data roles are custom. There is no delivered data role because data role is something that we build defining based on the requirement, based on the access that the customer is looking for in the job, in the job, right? So before we go into deep type of security, I would just like to show you <laughs> in the application what are you know, all these privileges and roles and how we can assign to users. So I log into the application. Now to be able to manage these roles, there is something called as security console. So under tools, you have something called a security console. The same can be you know, found from the navigator under tools and security console. Okay. This security console is where you can manage the entire security of the application. To be able to get to this work area, your user needs one role, right? Just because you can manage everything here doesn't mean that everyone gets this access. This is typically given to your IT team from the client side because they will manage this or the security team from your own company or to the lead consultant or who is managing the security. So there is a role called IT security manager. Okay. So this is a job role. This particular role grants access to this work area of managing the security, right? So as a consultant, you may first want this particular role so that you can log in and add the appropriate roles that you're looking for. Okay, remember IT security manager or in short, we say ITSM. This is required to be able to manage all users and roles. Okay, so this is required for you to be able to make any changes to roles. Okay, so if I go to this role and I click on edit role, now this is a delivered role. How do you know which is a delivered role, which is a custom role? Anything that starts with ORA, ORA or Oracle in short is a role, right when you try to click on edit role you'll get this particular message also helping you to understand that this is a predefined role you do not modify a predefined role now why do you not modify a predefined role reason being at the end of every quarterly patch all the roles which are delivered are going to be overwritten and refreshed by oracle Sometimes there are certain functionalities and features that are added. And when those features are added, there are privileges that will grant you access to that feature. Not every time there is a change in the role or a change in the privilege, but whenever there's a change in the privilege, Oracle will override all the delivered roles. So if you are making any change to the delivered role, your changes will be lost. Okay. So never make a change to the delivered rule. Always make a copy of your predefined rule and enter or edit your copy rule. Oracle does not make any change to your copy rule. It is the delivered rule that will be impacted. Okay. So in your role category, you have this thing called as a job rule. So this is a job rule, right? Why is this a job rule? Because it is performing specific function that of an IT security manager. So you are you know, managing the security of your application. So it is a very specialized role for a given work area. Therefore, it is a job role. Okay. 
Next, you have something called as functional security policies. Now, these are nothing but the aggregate privileges, right? Which will grant you access to certain reports, certain application page work areas, right? So apply HCM role provisioning rules. So this will grant access to this work area, which is HCM role provisioning rules. We will see this in a while. Delete access groups, delete schedule processes, import workers, initiate spreadsheet loader, manage application security, right? So all these are granting you specific access to certain work areas. Ability to reset password, right? View user accounts. So all these are specific work areas that you get access to with this particular role. Now this is a job role. So if you go to the data security policies, some of these you know, functional security policies or aggregated privilege will also come along with a duty with the relevant data security policy, right? So there are certain accesses that we can control. For example, now this is grant on business unit. Okay, so the access to the business unit is dependent on the organization security profile. So we'll talk about what the security profiles are, but where it says all values. So grant on department, the IT security manager can choose the departments in the enterprise, which department they can choose. They can choose all the departments. Okay. So for the jobs, this role is granting access for you to search for all the jobs, all the departments. When it comes to legal employer, they have restricted it by the security profile so on and so forth, right? Then there are some custom ones that you see. Everything which has this kind of a number format is probably a custom value. Manage ESS requests. So all these are your data security policies. So we'll go ahead and create, you know, job role, we'll create data role. So you'll have a better understanding of what these data security policies do. Coming to the next one, which is the role hierarchy. So this is where I told you that one role inherits another role. Right? So these are certain privileges which are directly inherited by the IT security manager, BI author, functional setups user. What does this functional setup user do? This is granting you access to the functional setup area, which is the setup and maintenance. So if I do not have this role or this privilege, I will not be able to access the setup and maintenance work area, right? Manage users. So you notice that something ends with a duty. Those are your duty roles. Okay. Anything that ends with a duty is your duty role. Duty, duty, duty. Anything that ends with a privilege is your aggregate privilege. So that is how you can identify which are aggregate privileges, which is a duty role. Now these duty roles are inherited by your job role. These aggregate privileges are inherited by your job role. Then what is this FSCM? What is OBI? What is CRM? If you ask, <laughs> FSCM is your functional setups. OBI is OTBI or your reporting access. CRM is customer relation management, HCM would be human capital management and uh, SCM would be supply chain management. So this is abstract. So this is your abstract role. Okay, so IT security manager in, is inheriting all these roles. Security on reporting duty, CRM, FSCM, OBI. So your IT security manager is inheriting all these roles. Then you have segregation of duties where you want to specifically define when you have multiple roles and they have multiple privileges. You can you know, classify and categorize which particular uh, role do you need or you don't need. And you can eliminate your duplicates. 
Users is where you can assign this role to a particular user. So you will see that there are multiple users who have this particular role assigned. So when I say user, it is nothing but a user account, which is tied to a username and a password. Now user account may or may not be tagged to a person record. We have seen it in the first session, a user account without a person record, a user account with a person record, right? And at the end, we have a summary. So it gives you any additions or deletions when you're doing a custom role. Okay, so any questions around this so far? Okay, so I would request you go and read this uh, Fusion HCM security implementation guide, which will give you a list of all the delivered roles and the privileges and what access they have. One other common role that we usually come across is human resource specialist. So this is your job role. Again, it ends with a job, so that's your job role. This role inherits so many privileges, so many duty roles, and it gets, it grants you access to almost everything in HR, right? So if you look at uh, data policy, or if you look at the role hierarchy, Hmm. Human so sure. They should have a lot more. Hang on. Human resource specialist. Okay. So there are two human resource specialists. One starts with a perk, one starts with an aura. Always use the one which is starting with aura. Okay. The one which starts with a perk is an older version of this uh, job role which has very limited access but the one starts with aura is the one you should be using because it has like i said almost access to everything within the hcms for global hr now your hr specialist not only gets you access to your uh, what do you call core hr it also gives you access to the entire talent management and absence management so this is something that oracle has done where they have merged entire talent related uh, data and absence related data into this one role called human resource specialist which i feel is not the right way of dealing with things you have you know they have a separate benefits specialist they have a compensation specialist or administrator absence admin, there's nothing on absence but they have a payroll separately defined but they have clubbed absences and uh, talent management into this human resource specialist Okay, so if you look at the role hierarchy, give it a minute to load. Again, I'm not sure why Oracle came up with this concept of you know, merging the talent and the absences and the core HR into this one role. They could have split it out because a lot of times customers are looking for the talent managers or you know the hr business partner who take care of goals performance talent review they do not want access to other work areas like at absence administration or you know access to full access to manage the employees uh, like doing the you know transactions for transfers promotion salary change also this hr specialist grants you access to salary so this is something that you have to be very careful 
when you are assigning a human resource specialist role to a person, you are granting them absent, access to absence, goals, performance, talent, everything, and also salary. Okay. So you see that this particular role is inheriting so many duties, so many privileges. Okay. You have a full list of privileges that are being inherited by this particular human resource specialist. Um, so this question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so where is all these privileges uh, documented? Are they in the same place or I used to have? This is documented over here. Oh, Oracle okay. Fusion Security Implementation Guide. So okay. everything is documented over here. Read this document. It's in, okay. Referencing. Again, how do you get that document? Go to docs.oracle.com. Go to Fusion Application Suite, Human Capital Management. You have all books and you'll find one IT security. Okay. okay. And if you ask me individually, there will be like thousands of duty roles. You may not know or you may not remember all of them. Therefore, if you want to create a custom role, we do not create a custom role like this from scratch. What we do is we just copy an existing role and we start removing privileges which we know do not you know need are not required if you try to create your own job role from the scratch you'll never be able to do it trust me you have to create a role then you can assign the functional security policy yeah. then you create this data security policy again this is a very very big long list and we will not be able to create this from scratch so never go ahead and create a job role or a role from scratch. Always find the nearest job role or abstract role which is relevant to your requirement and start deleting the privileges. Okay. Do not create something on your own. You'll never be able to do it. Or you know, look at these things. If I'm looking at a role which can configure you know talent related area so this is a privilege for talent this is a privilege for talent right so what i do is i just take a copy of this and i remove all the other privileges which are not relevant okay so this is relevant to talent this is relevant to talent this is not relevant to talent i remove this this is not relevant to talent i remove this right so that is how you will create your custom roles Thank you.